So um, I am here to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Internet of Production Alliance. Um, and you know, some of you may already be familiar with the, the work of the Alliance and some of the, the background and history of the organization, but it's uh, we've come a long way, even in the short amount of time I've been working with the group. And so I wanted to you know, provide background for those who weren't familiar and also talk about some of our latest projects and where we're looking to go and how you can get involved. So yeah, that's basically the agenda in a nutshell. Um, a little bit more about me, who the Alliance is, um, what constitutes uh, our organization and really what we're focusing on. Um, and, you know, it's it's interesting in listening to, you know, to Ali's presentation and, you know, having that conversation. This is a lot of the work that we do is that there are a lot of amazing open projects, open manufacturing, open uh, production, open research projects happening out there um, in, especially in OSH and in open source hardware. And uh, we're really looking to serve as um, an, uh, a support for that, you know, full ecosystem and working with different organizations like GOSH and others. So I'm always so glad to hear about new projects and, and these initiatives that are ongoing. So a little bit more about me first, so you know the, the my disposition and where I'm coming from. Um, I'm just one of a part of a team. So there's the Internet of Production Alliance, and I'll talk a little bit more about you know, the internet of production generally, what constitutes the alliance and the and the, the work of that larger ecosystem. But this is, you know, just a snapshot of the core team um, of folks who are working um, either on, you know, on a, a contract or the majority of their full-time work um, to support the alliance. And so I'm the, the research and community engagement lead. And so what that means is that I, I work with, you know, folks like Bree, um, I work with folks um, from Oshawa and um, Open Toolchain Foundation, Fab City Foundation, um, to really bring together our different communities that are focusing on building this open manufacturing ecosystem and supporting um, open source hardware. I refer to it a lot as, um, you know, my my goal is to make open source hardware OSH a household name like open science um, and to support everything that goes into that. My, my background is in, um, you know, I'm a recovering academic. Um, I do still have a research appointment um, at a, an, an, a research intensive, a Carnegie R1. Uh, however, I just went face first into open and left a faculty position to work in open manufacturing. And that is after having studied educational um, policy for years and years and going back to one of Ollie's comments about, well, and you know, another, another comment as well about how can we get universities to recognize um, the, the value of open. Um, that, is, that is something that you know, I, uh, I work very hard to integrate into to all of the, the work that is done with the Alliance. So fundamentally our, our mission and our vision is to, to bring together communities from all over the world who are, are looking to um, you know, address the, the fragility that we all were aware of, of the, of the supply chain, even before it was um, you know, really put, to, put through its paces and put to the test by the pandemic. Um, and so we're, we really believe that, you know, the, the future of manufacturing lies in the hands of, of, of every citizen. Like it should not, you know, in order to be able to manufacture or produce a life-saving device, whether it's PPE or a ventilator, or, um, you know, I was talking with somebody earlier today about a, you know, a, a newborn a warmer in, in, in a NICU unit, that's a newborn, um, intensive care unit. You shouldn't be reliant on you know the the heavily concentrated areas of wealth and supplies and infrastructure that are gathered around um, you know the larger popular more populous cities and which are typically in you know the the west and the global north. And so we're really looking at how can we support how can we build and support a sustainable decentralized um, ecosystem for manufacturing so that, you know, a lot of this knowledge that's being produced, you know, we talked about IP um, a little bit, you know, with all these presentation and 
um, and also about you know open design files, how can we take that global knowledge and help to support an infrastructure that allows for localized production, also using locally sourced materials, which can help save on shipping costs. Um, you know, it can support uh, upcycling initiatives and overall have a very positive uh, impact on our, our climate. And so this is really just a, you know, it's a, a, a visualization that we use to help to describe, you know, the current state of manufacturing, um, looking at, you know, pre and, and post internet, uh, again, talking about how manufacturing is really traditionally been concentrated in areas with the larger populations um, and requires, you know, additional distribution to those who are in need. Um, and as somebody who grew up in an area that is very rural still, to this day um, doesn't have internet access um, and sometimes not electricity, <laughs> it's, um, this is of a detriment to being able to produce, um, you know, different materials and, and medicines and, um, you know, different items that are in, in support of public health. I'm just keeping an eye on the chat here to see if they're, whoop, here we go. Move that over, make sure I'm not missing anything. So this is a little bit more about, you know, who we are as an alliance. Um, so, you know, I showed you a snapshot of the team of the folks who really work on, you know, supporting the, the work of the alliance, which includes fundraising, um, different initiatives and projects, um, and a few data standards that I'll talk a little bit more about in detail. Uh, but these are, you know, some of the members of the council. And the Internet of uh, Production Alliance Council is a group that gets together regularly. Um, in fact, we recently had a, a gathering uh, at the tail end of the, um, the Fab City Hamburg event um, just this last week, um, you know, getting together to talk about, you know, how do we best support this growing ecosystem? How do we address issues of of governance, communication, and also, you know, mapping out this vast and growing ecosystem um, that is, is entirely global. Um, again, there are a lot of amazing organizations doing incredible work, but it's, you know, how are they communicating with one another and how can everybody have access to that bigger picture? You know, going back to that, you know, that mandate of, um, how can we empower every citizen to be able to use that global knowledge to produce locally? So this is, you know, the focus of the council is really to look at some of the broader global trends. How can we combine our forces to be able to get funding to move some of these initiatives forward? <clears throat> so there are two um, main areas of focus, you know, from the start, of the Internet of Production Alliance and, you know, a little bit more on the, the history of that. It, it really started with a conversation about five years ago in Warsaw when there were stakeholders that got together to talk about, you know, how do we address these, these issues of the, the lack of equitable, you know, distribution of resources and, and wealth in support of, um, you know, production across, across the globe. And so where it really started was looking at uh, standardized uh, protocols and uh, data standards. And so this was something um, that was touched on a little bit in um, the previous presentation and in the discussion is that, you know, for all of the, the open initiatives and projects that are happening, um, you know, without there being a standardized data protocol to be able to support a lot of this work and enable that conversation between, well, there's the data conversation between different platforms and projects, but then there's also the conversation with universities um, and with different funders. And it's, you know, it becomes then more about just data. Um, it then becomes, uh, you know, questions about like how, when this open uh, microscope or this open ventilator is produced, how do we, then what's the process through which we, you know, assure the quality of the product um, to ensure it's not going to do any harm? And so this is all a part of that. You know, what is what is the larger organization that kind of, you know, stewards the, these conversations? And that's really one of the areas where the alliance um, has, you know, stepped in to support. And then there's, of course, the practical and accessible knowledge component. Uh, going back to that empowerment piece, if you're, you know, 
anything from you know somebody running a lab at a, a, a research institution to an individual maker who is going to a local fab lab um, to build something. How can we open up, how can we unlock the information and resources that they need um, in order to complete their work? And I'm sorry, my calendar keeps going off with alerts. <laughs> Apparently I'm missing a bunch of meetings. So here is, um, here is a, a snapshot of some of the outputs from the Alliance in the past um, year or two. It's a you know, uh, a, a relatively young organization in the, the grand scheme of things. Um, and, and yet, you know, there's a lot, a lot has already been done. I myself have been with the Alliance for um, around six months now. And, um, you know, over the course of the past, you know, year plus, I, I know that we've grown in membership. Um, I've been a part of a lot of the fundraising initiatives. Um, there are two uh, more significant projects that have come up over the last year that I'll be talking about a little bit. Um, I can show, I think it would probably be best to show you live some of the resources that we have um, on our site so far as data standards um, and uh, protocols documentation design are concerned. Um, we really start started out with um, uh, three main standards, open standards and protocols, which I'll touch on briefly, that I could show you live. We are in the process um, here uh, under machines and tools and then people and skills. We've been doing um, a significant amount of uh, research and development surrounding uh, the creation of new protocols and data standards. And it's really looking at how we can increase, um, you know, capacity to be able to, to map machinery across different manufacturing nodes. So by manufacturing nodes, I mean, you know, maker spaces and fab labs and factories and, and basically places that are open to the public or have the capacity to support um, production by the public. Um, we've been working on uh, developing standardized data protocols to create a global map so that, you know, you know how to build the thing, you know how to source the materials, where do you go to do it? Um, and then the people and skills standard, that's a, a research uh, initiative that I'm actually leading that is looking at uh, CK2 to establish a data protocol and standard for um, a digital maker passport so that uh, nomadic makers can move easily between these spaces to, to manufacture products. And then we're kicking off research on materials and components. And that is really looking at, um, you know, we've got the, the standard for how do you build the thing that's open know how, mapping the machines and tools that's open know where, people and skills open know likely who, um, not sure what that'll be called. But then what about the specific materials that go into the production of these products? Um, going back to that issue of compliance, just briefly, um, there've been a lot of conversations that, that we've been engaged in about, you know, what are the thresholds for materials that could be used in a particular product and still provide that allowance for, you know, certification and quality control. We talk a lot about upcycling and reuse of materials uh, in order to minimize waste, but what, how does that impact the quality? These are these unanswered questions that we're engaging in additional R&D to be able to provide um, the answers to those to the community. And then of course, our business models and contract research, which we have a couple of funded projects right now. I'll talk about um, where we'll be testing, you know, some of the, the, the flow, the economic flows through um, the production of items to ensure that, you know, makers are compensated. They, you know, their livelihoods are insured as they're a part of this open, um, you know, this open and decentralized process. That's a, that's a problem that has yet to be solved for. And we've made significant progress on that as well. So these are the three um, main open standards and protocols that we have been working on so far. Uh, and if we have time, I can you know, show you a little bit about how they look um, as hosted on our site. Um, all of the research and development we do is open. 
Um, and so a lot of these standards are, are hosted um, on uh, PubPub as a platform. And we invite uh, contributions, um, whether in co-authorship or comments from our community members. I'll talk a little bit more about how you can get engaged uh, in those conversations in a couple of minutes. Um, but just speaking again to you know, the initial standard, the open know-how, that's really taking a look at what are, you know, if you're looking to reproduce a particular piece of equipment, um, where to get the design files? Are they open for you to use? Um, what are the assembly instructions? You know, how, whatever the, what is the step, step-by-step -step process to put this together? How do you test it? Like it covers everything in that. Um, and our data standard also allows for the, the production of a manifest file, which basically tells you, you know, like this is the bill, you know, the bill of materials. Um, this is, you know, the original author of the design. Um, anything that you need to reproduce an item, and that's all the within the open know-how. And then the open nowhere is, of course, where you produce it. The electronic components um, standard is is one that was recently released um, and uh, you know it's relatively new and based on research that has been done on um, you know more of the the right to repair and repairability of electronic components because a lot of the you know consumer devices especially are locked down by IP and um, this you know essentially causes a lot of um, unnecessary e-waste and so we are contributing to that documentation by um, talking with uh, designers and with different companies about, you know, what are what are the policy shifts that need to take place in order to empower users to fix their own devices. So just very briefly, um, and I'm checking on the time really quick. Okay, um, these are a couple of the projects that we're involved in presently. Um, for those who have been to any of our community calls recently, um, we're currently engaged in a three year uh, consortium project, uh, the African European Maker Innovation Ecosystem or the MAKE project, which is seeking to establish and support a 500 node um, maker space ecosystem between Europe and Africa. Um, the research we're doing for the people and skills standard to create a digital maker passport. Um, this is one of the most immediate and significant use cases is, is the make project. Um, and this is the trajectory for the development of that maker passport. Um, we are about to release the beta version of that. Um, and we'll be calling for participation in, in drafting, um, you know, working on the draft of that data standard from community members. And so when I show you how to get onto our forum, um, you could keep an eye there to see uh, the work as it is ongoing. We were recently, um, we've recently engaged uh, with the, the uh, what we're referring to as the RISA project, but it's a distributed um, manufacturing uh, it, We've got to get the name of it right. It's so new. Um, the Distributed Manufacturing, Innovative Distributed Manufacturing in Africa Awards. And this is essentially, you know, talking about, we were talking earlier about building capacity or about like what the capacity is for any particular lab. Um, this project, um, which is funded by UK Aid, is seeking to work with um, nine maker spaces um, in Ghana, Kenya, and South Africa to work on building research capacity within the maker spaces themselves. And so um, learning about open scholarship research, what are the, the metrics that need to be reported in order to secure funding to provide sustainable livelihoods for communities, really looking at how can these maker spaces become self-reliant, um, you know, and do their own research and, you know, submit calls for their, you know, proposals for their own funding, not relying on, um, you know, researchers and scientists in the, the global North and the West to do the work. Um, and this project is kicking off in about, well, it's, it's started, <laughs> it's, it's already started. Um, and so this is where I'm just gonna mention briefly how you can get more involved um, and since this is being recorded, I will just show the contact information quickly. 
and then maybe do like a just a, a quick live jump into the community forum site. Um, so if you have any questions about the work that we do, reach out and ask. Um, happy to help. And I also encourage folks to sign up for our community forum. It's a discourse forum, open. Um, and um, this is where we have ongoing the discussions for all of our different initiatives, whether it's a data protocol or standard, an event, um, or you know, govern open governance. That was one thing I didn't mention actually, um, which is uh, another Code for Science and Society award that we recently received um, that'll allow us to focus specifically on open governance models and how we can apply that to the work of the Alliance. So I'm gonna wrap. I know there's only a couple of minutes left. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. <laughs>